Welcome to the Murray End. My name is Mark Machado. I'm joined by Nick Brooks in London and uh, back on the pod making his uh, his second appearance is former SL analyst Prad Navaratnam, who joins us from Sydney. Guys, there's a lot to talk about, a lot going on in shrug and cricket at the moment. Uh, the boys are in Bangladesh for a big uh, T20 noggin derby series. Uh, we're recording this hours after the second T20. Um, we are currently the series is one all. The first T20 went according to all plans, and the second one was didn't go as planned. Uh, Nick, let's let's start with you. What's your kind of take on on, on what happened at the game today? I don't really know what to say about it, Mark. It was one of those that just kind of sucked the life out of you, didn't it? I was saying to you guys just before we got on air, there was a time when the two KMs, Kusol and Kamindu, were batting together, and I thought it was going quite nicely. And then after Kamindu's run out, I don't know, things just went a bit flat. Uh, Sidira and Avishka ate up a lot of balls without scoring a lot of runs, and I think that Sri Lanka were probably about 20 runs short of where they needed to be. Uh, but then I'm not sure that they bowled particularly well to try and defend them. So it wasn't the best day for Sri Lanka fans, but um, it's T20 cricket. Bad days happen, I guess. Uh, Prab, before I come to you, I should say I forgot to mention to everyone that if you got this far, you've got to sign up to the newsletter. The link, <laughs> the link is in the description. What happens is when Prad gets on the Zoom, we just start firing random names, of, or not random, <laughs> random Sri Lankan cricketers' names at Prad and be like, tell us about this person. Tell us about this person. Tell us about this person. And then he gets us all rizzed up and we get all excited about it. And I forget to tell you to subscribe. <laughs> Prad, anyway, tell us about your, yeah. your thoughts on the second T20. Uh, mate, I think the second T20, um, I, I think both you and Nick nailed it. You know, they, they um, it was definitely below par. It reminded me a lot of uh, our performances pre uh, Afghanistan or pre Zimbabwe series. You know, when we were back in the old days, our, our batting just didn't seem to click. Um, felt, yeah, 100%. We had a lot, a lot of balls. I was looking at it more from a you know, analytical point of view. And, and, and you know, there was a, on a batting perspective, uh, after the first T20, for example, I did a review, right, and on, on Twitter, and, and I gave the batting after the first T20 8 out of 10. I'd say the second 20, we were about a 3 out of 10. And the reason why I'd go that low is because in a World Cup year, you can't afford these sort of performances. They're a bit chalk and cheese. Um, we had up a lot of balls. We were 8 for 1 after three overs. That's in the first power play. 18 balls halfway through a power play with the field in, we only got eight runs and we lost a wicket, you know? Um, so it, it, so that, that, that was, that ate up a lot of balls. And then there was a lot of, um, I, I looked at, you know, what we call big overs, overs where you score 10 more, 10 or more. And, and, and we had, I think I, I, I have got it somewhere here, the numbers, but I think we had, we had scored something like, I think like in the last 10 overs, I think we scored only two or something like that. I mean, if I'm just going, going through the numbers now, in the last 10 overs, we had one, two, three. That's it. Three big overs in the last 10. Um, so that's, a that's you know, ideally you want to be getting um, eight or more nearly in all those 10 overs. You want to be getting, you know, the last 10 overs, 80 to 100 runs. Um, so that, that's where I felt. And then bowling-wise as well, um, I, I felt in yesterday's game, look, A, we didn't have a total to defend, right? If we're batting first with such a heavy due factor, you could see it. Fiction was struggling to hold the ball. Um, the fast ball was struggling to hold the ball. Um, with such a duty fact, you need some runs on the board. And, and Nick said, he, you know, he felt they were 20 short. I actually felt they were at least 40 short. I think 200 plus was required on that on that wicket uh, with Duke. Um, and I felt, you know, so it was hard to judge the bowlers because they, they didn't have a total to defend. Uh, but mind you, with that being said and without Hasranga, what did puzzle me was the selection of four fast bowlers. Four fast bowlers. Uh, when I say four, sorry, actually, well, three fast bowlers, and then you'd say Matthews and Dustin would be a fourth together, um, and then only Thiksen would be a spin. So, I mean, Deal may have played a part in that, but I still, I mean, why, why take Van der Say all the way to Bangladesh and not play him, right? Yeah, I, I, I wonder, uh, Prad. Yeah, and you might have some yep. insight into this. What will the team and what will the players and the coaches and the management be saying at the hotel? tonight and and tomorrow morning as they prefer as they prepare for that third match um i think they would have de they would definitely see the batting as a weak link you know they'll address that 
I think that that's that would be the focus if if the past inning that I that I know and that I what I would expect is I think they'd be addressing the batting and they'd say we can't bat like that and expect to win games. Um, you know, one sixty we say is a pass score, but it's dependent on the pitch usually. Um, and the pass score is, is 200 and you just you plan innings from the back from then we seem to see in the last few series Sri Lanka seem to have been giving roles and structure and, and the intent has been there which has been great to see and I think intent comes from players knowing their roles they're confident okay I know what I need to do Sabiro knows he's supposed to back through you know because our Mendes goes and starts being aggressive so on and so forth Chariot goes and be as aggressive so the intent is there because the role's there but yesterday I felt they kind of fell in a hole a little bit um, and I think if if I was Chris or Wani or Charita, whoever, um, the one thing I'd be addressing is telling them is you break it. You know, go. We need to go back to showing that intent. It doesn't matter if if they ball first two good balls. You need to get your ball, get the ball off his line. You know, we saw that in the first over. Shoreful Islam to Abishka was a, it's a clear matchup, left arm pace to Abishka, but. Avishkin needs to do something. He needs to sort of step out of his crease. He needs to walk around, just throw that ball off the line. You know what I mean? All Shreffel did was just the same line and then same line and then same line. And he just kept blocking, blocking, built the pressure enough. Next over, boom, skies it. He's gone. Uh, Nick, that that's a, a, a great way to get into the Avishka dis- discussion, Brad. Thanks for teeing that up. Nick, how many more <laughs> chances or, or has Avishka got? Because... It feels like he's been given quite a few recently and he's he's not really taken any of them. Yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one because when was it? The Afghanistan ODI is where I thought he played really well and we were starting to see a bit of form from him and you just wanted him to transition that into this series. But um, he does look really vulnerable early, doesn't he? Uh, and... I mean, look, no opening batsman likes the ball wobbling around. It's always hard to get through, but it just seems like more than 50% of the time he's getting out single figure scores. And uh, yeah, it's tricky because they're really, it's clear there's a talented player there and you want to stick with him. But I think, I mean, the point is he's not going to be, if Patham was healthy, he wouldn't be starting at the moment, would he anyway? And so I think it's just. What I was struck by was suddenly it's like, whoa, there's one game before the World Cup and it's three months away. And it feels like Sri Lanka have come a long way, but it still feels like there's some things to figure out. And uh, I'm interested to hear Prad's take on it, what he thinks about the top four. I mean, to me, it looks like it's going to be Patham, Kusul, Kamindu, Sadira. Is that one too many anchor in there, Prad? Are you happy with that balance? I mean, all those guys do look like they've shown a kind of increased intent and improved ability to clear the boundary, but is it sort of explosive enough? Um, put it this way, I think if Kusal and Kamindu play the role that they're currently playing, which is actually quite aggressive, like we've seen Kamindu come in and ball one or two, he's not afraid to take them on. Uh, same with, with Kusal. I think then it's okay because um, then Patham comes in and Patham can play his role where he anchors, but then gets start gets going uh, in a while. Um, the question is going to be: How do you fit Patham and Sadira in the same eleven? That's that's the question I'd like to see answered. Um, and I think they will start with that. And I think they'll start with you know Sadira at four and Patham at one. And I think the real challenge is game one is against South Africa. If South Africa, if I'm South Africa's coach, I'd be saying, guys, get Kusal out early, get coming out early, and you can really build some pressure on. Because you know Sadir and Patham are going to take their time, right? So you can build some real good dot ball pressure there. And then there's a lot of then pressure put on your Charits, your Angelos, and your Dustins, and your one in those to come in and make up for those dot balls that soaked up at the top. Now, Patham, after about, say, three, four, five overs, usually he get he can get going. But usually in the first couple of the spin, he takes his time. So really looking at over eight, nine before Patham starts kind of really flowing. Same with Sadir. We saw that in the first T20. It was a perfect game. For him to really get going early, knowing we had wickets in hand, yet he still chose to bat through the innings. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see where that lies. And and I think the next, the other question is is, is just of the, the question that Mark put to you, Nick, was if Abishka is our backup opener, I think that's a bit of a concern for me um, because I think you know he's he's out of form. In one days, I think he's in, he's in he's in pretty good form, and I think the reason why he's good in one day is is um, is because he gets more time to settle in. He doesn't have to go from from ball one, um, and and I think he, he feels in T20s he's got to go from ball one. So, put it this way: 
if yesterday's game, the way it started, if you start on a one day with a maiden, you could probably still, you've got another, you know, nine overs with the field up. You've got another 50, 49 overs to bat out, you know? So Avishu can get going and he's very good in a one day side. And this is something we picked up in the 2021 T20 World Cup, which I'm not sure if you remember, we played Avishu at four. Hmm. Yeah. Um, that was a data driven decision. Uh, and that was mainly because we we noticed he fi- he finds a lot more pressure with the field in. He likes to take his time. So he likes to knock the singles around, get that confidence up, and then he goes, right? So that's why we switched him to four because we said, okay, well, if he likes the field out, how is he against spin? And he's actually pretty decent against spin. So we said, okay, we'll play him at four. Um, we didn't, unfortunately, he got injured and we couldn't, you know, and things changed and we couldn't continue with that. But that's another option we could consider. If Patham and Sadira are then soaking up balls and you're carrying Avishka as your backup batsman, can you play Avishka at four with Patham, Kosal, Kamindu, and Avishka? I just think, though, at this point, I mean, if, if you're one of the 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 coaches and you've you've made the decision to go drop Sadira, I mean, how do you explain that to him? Because he's been in the side now yeah. that scored over 200 in two successive games, even though there was obviously a gap between them, and I mean yep. they 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 didn't quite do it today. But I mean, there there's definitely been such a change in intent. They've become kind of these intent monsters. And apart from today, the last kind of four eighty T uh, twenties they played before that, it's been quite clear that actually they're going out to smash it. And it does feel like his role is defined because I think he'd mm. be within his rights to turn around and say, "But I was just doing what you told me to do, right?" Yeah, yeah, no, you're 100 right. Actually, and it's one. To be honest, I would start with Sadir at four. I wouldn't next game or first game of the World Cup. I'm not dropping Sadir. I'm playing him. I'm saying if we find it's got what's going to be interesting is let's see. Don't forget we played Afghanistan at home, Bangladesh and uh, away, and then Zimbabwe at home. Right? It's not the ideal litmus test before a World Cup. So the challenge is going to be when you come across. Your likes of your South Africa's, your England's, your India's, your New Zealand's, your Pakistan's, and the rest, right? Those sort of teams are smart. They will play smart. They know if they get Sadir in early, that he's going to soak up balls, which then adds pressure. So that's it's what's going to be interesting to see is when we get to the World Cup, is can we keep against a good team? Can we can we go with two hundred? What what's our plan B if our intent monsters, so your likes of your Kusals, your Charits fail? What is our plan B? Do we still have Sadira and knock it around? That is my that that's I just feel like we've got a plan A. We don't have a plan B. How much though can you have a plan A? Only, sorry, a plan B. The only reason I say this, yeah. right, is because Pep Guardiola, uh, who's the manager <laughs> of Man City and previously at Barcelona, has spoken about how if you if you work within his system, you need to fully believe in the system. And therefore yeah. you can't have a plan B in the back of your mind because yeah. You might not that that is even if it's only one percent, it's one percent off off your brain, and it's not the hundred yeah. percent you need to give it right. So yeah, and yeah. I think I think that's even more true possibly in cricket than it is in football, right? Because yeah, it, cricket in a way is kind of more linear, right? So yeah. I'm, th- this is going off in all weird directions. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> <laughs> we need we need to get pep to SLC. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Oh my gosh, could you imagine what it'd make of Gaul? <laughs> You'd love it. <laughs> Yeah, look, I answer your question. Look, you're right. You know, I'd put it. It's not a matter of whether you have one over the other. I think you 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 fully believe in Plan A, and that's your goal as a team. We you know as a team, we all got to believe in and invest into. But I think you need a Plan B when things go wrong. You you uh, you mean put it this way: if wickets are falling around you, do you still tell Sadira, so okay, yep, hold up one end of the wickets don't fall. That's fine. Yeah. But now, how do we still get to our target score of two hundred? We can't then settle for okay. Well, wickets fell, so that's why we batted out and scored one fifty. Do you know what I mean? So, so there has to be, um, and, and it could be the fact that Sadira still plays that role, and then the likes of Angelo, Dasun, and Juan Lindu and Charit have to step up and play that aggressor role while holding the pressure. And if that's the case, that's the case. That's fine, you know. But it's a little bit of give and take in that sense. What, one more question of what I'm going to describe as the Avishka conundrum and also the, the number four conundrum. And that is, do we all have a soft spot for Avishka just because when he gets going, he looks so beautiful when he gets going. 
and and Sri Lankans are really opposed to what I will refer to as ugly runs, where he just never scores ugly runs. He always scores beautiful runs. And because of that, are we trying to shoehorn him into a team? And really, he's possibly not quite good enough for, the, for this level to go all the way. I'll just like, leave that open-ended, deep philosophical collection to the floor there. <laughs> I'll, I'll let Nick take that one. <laughs> oh, but it's hard, man, because they are beautiful runs and I love to see them and I just want to see them more regularly. Uh, but I don't know, it, for me, it has been like, it's been a stop-start career for Avishka, hasn't it? He's been in and out and he hasn't had the longest runs. So I'm going to go with leniency on him. I still think there's a quality international player in there somewhere. It's really interesting what Prad says about him preferring the field out early and like taking a little time to get going because that to me all sounds like mental stuff rather than technical stuff and I wonder if it's just yeah finding that mentality scoring some T20 runs and the confidence will follow yeah from from my perspective as well I think I, I, I'm a firm believer I think I've actually got a lot of talent as well I remember if you think back he was he was I think going back to the under 19 World Cup, when he he went straight from the under 19 World Cup to the national team, like within a few months, and and he got Mitch Stark in swinging Yorker first ball for his debut, right? So I was like, well, what a way to what a debut! But you know, in, in saying that, I still think he's is a quite a talented player, yes. Um, but I think with when it comes to T20 cricket, we need to help him find his feet. So it needs to be done with a plan. And slowly, I don't think we should discard him completely. I think it's a matter of working with him and finding a role for him if we want to keep him in the team. Um, but in one day cricket, I think he's the perfect opening partner for Patham. I think him and Patham, that's your opening slot sorted, locked in, put it away for the next five years. Um, let, let's let's leave the Vishka conundrum to a side and look ahead slightly to that third um, and now decisive match. Um it's our final match before before the World Cup, and you know, obviously, we all want to beat Bangladesh, the because it is is this become this big derby, and you know, we, we all remember what they did to our hero Angelo at the World Cup, um, and how ghastly that was. Um, but do we actually have to use it as that last opportunity before the World Cup to try and figure out if Avishka works at four or give a Van der Sey a shot uh, in, in the side. I mean, do, what do we learn? Is it more about learning than it is about performance at, at this point, Brad? Or do we now try and go, we're game out. Let's just try and play our best 11 and, and get the win. Um, I think you have to get the win. I think you have to get the win. You don't want to go to the World Cup off the back of a series loss. There's going to be a lot of questions asked if we lose a series. Um, so especially because just before, it's the last game before the World Cup. Well, either way, you're going to see one in the back, right? So he's going to take what I would hope one of the three paces slots. Um, and then he'll come in, he'll be there with Mahesh. I would, with the rest of the side, I would back them. You've, you've gone this far, you just got to keep going down that road now. Um, and you know, we saw the selectors come out and say, you know, they don't want to go with Chris Pule and they didn't want to go with Siobhan because they're out of form and they're young. That's fine. But if they now backtrack on that and then expect them to come in for the World Cup, that's the worst thing they can do. These are young, young boys that you can't throw them into the World Cup. So I think now this, the, the options are going to have to be pat them. Uh, well, I would back up for the third T20 and say, all right, have a go again. Uh, and then... You've got Patham and Kusal to open, and then that opening slot, it's a fight-off between Avishkin and, and, and KJP, basically, possibly. Um, and you hopefully have at least some domestic T20 games where both of them can kind of go head-to-head -to, -head to try and fight off for that position. Nick, what would you do? Uh, I think they've got to treat it like it's the first game of the World Cup and play their best 11. And I still yeah. don't like... Um, I don't know, are you guys clear what the first 11 is like because i'm not at all uh i don't know who the seamers are who they pick if we were playing south africa tomorrow uh i don't know are they going to stick with angelo and shanaka because i think that it's 
got to be sort of one or the other, or that it will be the team will be better served with one or the other and bringing in another specialist bowler. So you've got a bit more ballast there, especially because Hasaranga is going to come in and you want him to bat in the top six, really, don't you? You want him to come in about the 10 over mark and tee off. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Who, who would you guys go with as the sort of starting seamers if we were playing South Africa tomorrow? It's like a tough one because Paterona is so dangerous, but he's going to have off days. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I think last time I was asked this question, um, I think I said that you want Shamira... Madhushanka and Paterana. But then I remember trying to put the rest of the team together and I think I might have had 12 players in it. Um, well, so then you've got to have one of Ash, Angelo or Shanika, right? Yeah, I, and and because I, cause I have no agenda, I'd obviously have to pick Angelo, right? Yeah, me um, too at the moment. <laughs> um, but I'm, I mean, the thing is, it, between the two of them, it's so difficult, right? And and actually, one of, one of the, the things we haven't talked about that we probably deserves... A whole, a whole podcast like dedicated to it is how Angelo takes wickets in the, in the power play because I think it's 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 when I when I was a kid and I first started playing cricket and I was an awful cricketer my dad would always just say try and just get your line and length try and just get your line and length and be consistent and I kind of feel in a way that's kind of like someone's whispering that into Angelo's ear and he's quite got enough variations that it kind of lulls the batter into a false sense of security and they try on a big swipe mistime it because even though it's not very quick he does vary the speed of it um mm. and it, he's he's kind of taken the art of spin bowling and applied it applied it to to kind of medium pace and somehow getting wickets but i don't know if that's like an oversimplification and i don't know if you guys have any kind of deeper thoughts of it but i do think whatever he's doing it's it's effective, right? Because it's it's getting wickets. But I, I do wonder if, you know, could you do that against an Australia? Could you put them could you put them to do that against uh, a, an England side? Could you do that against India? Because I think those three teams are probably the bat their opening batters are, are maybe slightly more sophisticated and would see through it. Is is yeah. is is that fair cop? I don't know. Uh, the I, I, I think that's a surprise. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it's, I, I think that, I think you've nailed it 100. I think um, look, go, going back to what Nick was saying, I'm Nick. You, I've, I'm a massive, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you're preaching to the choir. I'm a big fan of the six-five combination. You need to have for, for the Sri Lankan team. You need to have five bowlers out and out with um, like an so Angela Dasson. One of them would have to give way. And they would be your backup bowler because I've always said it: one bowler always has a bad day every game, minimum one bowler, right? So if you're only going to play your four bowlers, then you've got no choice; you have to bowl them out. So six five gives you that that allowance to to play around with your bowlers a little bit. So and it allows one to go up and so much more, right? But I think knowing their self team management, and I've been working with the selection committee, but I would think that their thinking would be the same: is they wouldn't then. It looks like they're going to stick to this. So I think we're going to see, for the South Africa game, we're going to see Angelo and Dustin both in the side, and they're going to play 7-4. Um, if you're asking me, if we went 6-5, who would I pick as the paces? Well, out of the paces, I'd, I'd go to Mira for his experience. Um, and I think I'd go Mother Shanka. And then you've got one in Tikshna, 3-4, and then the third pacey, I, I think... I'd go Padrona for the death, mm -hmm. right? Um, they, and that's and I know you think, okay, well, you've got batting only down to eight. Because Tikshna can bat; he's a, he's a decent bat. He's shown that in recent games, so he'll come in at eight. Chamira, I've seen can hold a long bat, so he can kind of clear the field a little bit if he, if we need. So he'll come in at nine, and it should be okay from that point. You, I mean, if you're relying on your nine and your ten to score winning runs, you have got bigger problems. So, <laughs> so you know what I mean. Um, and then I, that's 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 the way I'd go. And 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 I, I, you know, going to what you were saying, Mark, then with with Angela Dawson, you're right. Angela's nailed that opening, you know, that opening that power play bowling because it, it's, it's exactly. I feel it's the same thing as well. I've, I've I've never worked with Angelo, so I don't know, you know, his mindset and how he thinks. But it seems as though he's got the ball. And he said, "Listen, all I'm going to do is just land a line and length, know my plans, and just execute on the plans. I don't care about anything else." Right. Um, and and you're right though. Like we saw it yesterday, Bangladesh took him apart those first two overs. But the first game he was pinpoint accurate, right? 
So it, it's it's a gamble with that because when you go line and length, when all you got is line and length, the clever players here, Quinton de Kock, to David Warner's, you know, your Roy Chalmers, they'll know, well, I know Angie's going to be bowling this good length, forward stump, every ball. He's just going to wear it very his pace. And he's not quick anyway. He's all about 120, 130. So I'm probably going to stand out of some of my crease, take a couple of steps forward, turn that good lane into half volley and go bang. Right? So that is a risk you're going to play with. Um, but I think that you just got to wait. This between Angela and Dustin, I think it's a tough call. Um, if it was up to me and there's a pure data driven decision, I would go Dustin against the pace heavy teams and I would go Angelo against the spin heavy teams. So Angelo for the Asian teams and Dustin for the South Africa, the Australias, the Englands. Because um, Dustin likes pace on the bat um, and he can really execute. Um, whereas Angelo is really good at grafting and can really take on take the spinners down as well. Um, so that's that's the other option. Or, or you know, you could you could I, I, I know Mark's not gonna like this, but you could down the track, you could play Angelo at four, um, and then Dustin at six. Or whatever, whatever that combination is, you know, what I mean? depending on. The <laughs> no, no, it's, 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 it's not. That I don't like it, right? Look, this is a this is a safe space. This is a striking <laughs> cricket safe space. Yeah, there's no right or wrong yeah. answers. I just think yeah, yeah. about the humans involved in this, and I do. I just think like, <laughs> how can you turn around, to Sadira? Like the kind of innings he's been playing recently. No, no, okay? 100%. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, mate. You know, the side. I think it's 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 really tough for me. I I just feel like our engine, our batting engine. Is Sadira and Charith, right? It kind yeah. of feels that there's a kind of feeling that I haven't had for a little while with Sri Lankan cricket, where when the two of them are in, you kind of feel like, all right, it's it's, it's going to be okay, guys. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, though, obviously, ideally, you don't, you know, you want a position where the top three have kind of set us up a little bit better. But um, if they're if they're in, it just feels all right, and I think maybe the the last decade or so has has left me with some kind of scars. And uh, I I valued the wicket slightly higher than you guys valued the wicket. I don't like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But look, oh, that said, I do love the intent. I love that we we'll become these intent monsters, and I love that you can almost see them getting pissed off at themselves and they don't make their ten runs and over or whatever. And and they're coming out and saying it right in the in the post match stuff that you know they're saying we want to get 200, 200. 200 is so clearly the target that they've got, and they so mm. clearly those roles seem to be defined where it kind of didn't feel like that in the past. I'm I'm, I'm just I just think, and I mentioned this, you know, it, in our in our pre. Uh, podcast conversation I just mentioned I just feel and I, and I admittedly A I should say I'm a very optimistic Sri Lanka fan at the best of times and B I did feel going into the ODI World Cup that I think we could make a real good fist of this but I just feel now with this T20 team um, that there's like five or six players there that are kind of as good as anyone else in the world and, have, and are still quite early in their careers and could kind of you know in the next few years could kind of push on and and be world class. I mean, that said, obviously with the bowlers, it does a lot of that does come down to injuries, right? Like you know how how consistent they are. You look at someone like Jamira, who's been you know he, he's it feels like he's injured more than he than he's fit, and it's 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 massively hampered his career and what he's gone on to achieve. Um, but you know if some of the you know someone like Madishank, if he can stay in, relatively injury free, then you just feel like he could he could be a uh, one of the you know the all time greats for. For Sri Lankan uh, cricket, and and then you know with the bat, you look at Patam, you look at Charith, and you're just like already. I feel quite early on in their careers that they are pretty consistent. That they are, you know, that I, Charith, I just think has the most unbelievable mentality when he's batting. You can see the intensity that and focus that he brings he brings to it. And you know, Shay Shay when he when he's batting because he's so so focused on it, right? Um and you know Patham since he's come into the team it feels like every series he just gets better just slightly better and slightly better and slightly better and now we've seen what he's done like since you know the beginning of the, just before he was injured and he's become an absolute I think he's become an absolute white ball monster and machine and you know he he's already on the you know the list of of top ten Sri Lankan batters in 
in T20 runs scored and 50 scored and stuff like that. I, I was just wondering, Prad, what your experience was working with Patham and, and if you can give us any insight into the way he operates. Yeah, look, um, Patham was kind of one of those players um, that was identified early within the system as destined for greatness. And I think, uh, you know, Mickey Arthur, he's, he's going back to 2021 when Mickey was a coach, um, you know, had a had a keen eye on him and always said, I, I remember he made his debut in the West Indies uh, test series of 2020 or 2021, if I'm right. Um, and then it was initially when he came on board people like even in, including myself i'll put my hand up here and, and admit it is that we were like oh look he's technically really gifted player he looks like a solid test player um and you know the likes of your demo kind of right now you know solid test opener is going to score a lot of runs for you um and i remember one of my first few series uh w- w- with the team which was in july 2021 which is when this whole youth policy was launched patton was then selected to the white ball squad for the first time um and you know, we saw him in the nets. I was standing next to Mickey in the nets at the time, and I was you know, just talking. And and um, you know, I, 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 Mickey looks at me, and goes, "Oh, mate, this, wait, wait and watch. This guy's going to be an absolute superstar." You know, this was before he's made his one day in T Twenty debut, right? And you could see it. he was he was a solid player, young, had good head on his shoulders, and all that. And I kind of asked him, I said, "Oh, why don't we play him?" You know, and then he said, "No, no, no, no. Mickey wanted to go slow." Mickey said, "Let's just let him settle in, and then we'll go from there, right?" And he came about, so he was always identified as someone, you know, who's got a lot of talent. Um, and then I felt the time where the switch really clicked for for um, for Patham was went to the 2021 World Cup in in Dubai, and that was the first um, series we had Myla on board as a consultant coach. Um, and one of the things, you know, Myla is very data driven as well, and likes to use data for his coaching. And one of the things, you know, me and Myla kind of put together working with is okay, let's work with our batters, you know, identifying their weaknesses and their strengths using data and let's talk to them about how we can get get them to unlock you know their talent uh, even further and and when pat so we, we you know in this room we were in this meeting room we were doing each batter individually and patton came in and i put his wagon wheel up and his data up and all that and blah blah and then we could see that you know he he was playing a very traditional game like he, he didn't have his sweeps he wasn't really going after runs reverse not 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 those unorthodox kind of t- shots that are required for t20 cricket and especially when you're opening so Marla kind of looked at him and said, listen, you know, you, you've got, I've watched your domestic games. I've seen your games. I know, you know, I know you've got the sweep in your, in your toolkit. I know you've got the reverse sweep. I know you've got the aggressive game. Why is it that you don't play in the international level? And he just said, oh, you know, I'd coach professors if I play a more traditional game, so I wanted to, you know, play a technical game. And Marla just said, no, just, you know, leave that aside. If you see the ball, you hit the ball, you know, use the tools that you've got, whether it's a sweep, whether it doesn't matter, you just play it just go after it um and i felt that was the confidence patham needed and he just unlocked something in and then i said you know what got it i'm just gonna go there one of the greats just told me to play my game and he just went in there and he started then and i, I think if i could i haven't actually looked at the data but if I, I'd, I'd be really keen to see the data of you know what was his t20 record before and after in terms of strike rate uh and you know uh, how aggressive it was and he's he, I, i'm pretty sure that's seen a change in it even that 200 he scored against um, Afghanistan, we saw him reverse sweeping sixes, you know what I mean? So that really unlocked this change in him. And I think that's where it came about. Do, do you, that's, it's, it's, it's really interesting insight. Do you think there's other players in, in Shranko who, who are kind of, you know, when they get into the national side, end up playing within themselves and actually, you, you know, go back to my boy Sidera. Do you think he's got a reverse yeah. sweep that he could <laughs> unlock and, and unleash? <laughs> Uh, when he gets the when he touches down in the USA in a few months' time, um, I think Sadira is a very much more mature cricketer. Like he's been around the system a long time, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so so Sadira is in a different phase of his career. Um, I think that's I think I think he's got a reverse sweep if I'm right. Um, but in saying that, he's not that aggressive type of that. As in, you know, he's not going to hit you from ball one. I think. He, and he's a he's a confidence player. So there is a massive confidence player. The times I worked with, especially the last LPL, he's a massive confidence player. Once he's got his confidence, he's on a roll. You can't stop him. Um, and you know, one of the conversations I was having with Sadira in the LPL last year was, you know, because he's this massive superstition that before going to bat, he has to sit next to the analyst. So he'll come and sit next to our table with his pads on, gloves on, and he sits and so we start having conversations usually before he goes to bat. And I was talking to him before and I said, you know, and I said, I just dropped it to him. I said, you know. The, your goal should be eight runs and over. You know, how however you get there, you just get eight. Anything over eight, and you're winning. 
anything under it, you, you need to chase. So you get that boundary early, and then the rest of the over becomes a breeze, you know. Um, and he, because he, he, he asked me, well, why eight? And I said, well, you go eight, you, you eight 20 times, you get to 160. And you get a couple of overs over it, and suddenly that turns to 170, 180, and now you're getting to your 200, right? And all in 80s is, is four twos or one boundary and four singles, and you're there, right? And then he's like, oh, yeah. So he's very much in, a, in that stage where he's at that mature level. He's thinking, how do I structure my innings here? How do I, you know? So it's not about how do I unlock new shots. It's he knows his role. How do I structure my innings for that role? Um, we've seen kind of like the opposite thing with Kamindu, right? Brad so yeah. like a guy with a career strike rate of 120 some low 120s who's come in and just looks like he's got boundary options all over the park and like he can go yeah. from ball one and really score um like is that something that surprised you did you know that he had that kind of game in his locker it definitely surprised me um because I only worked with him in very few games I don't think he made played too many white ball games um in the sense that I actually made the 11. Um, I worked with him a little bit in the LPI, and I think what brought about his, um, you know, his, his new new game is, is I felt the LPL and the confidence in his role. Um, you know, I think they've kind of put him at number three, and they said, "Listen, we want you to make use of the power play, and we want you to be aggressive. So if it's there, hit it, you hit it." You know, um, and we've seen him do that in the LPL. Um, two years ago, I worked with him in the LPL for Candy, and he was he did that a few games. Um, and I think he's just with, used the LPL to get confidence in his own abilities. Um, he was another player, came to the under-19 system, a lot of pressure, this son, this kid who can bowl two hands, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so there's a lot of pressure on him. And then he just needed confidence in his own game. I think the LPL has given him that. And then he's come to the national team now, whereas previously in the national team, he didn't quite know what his role was. I think he was playing at six, he's playing at four, he's playing at seven. He, there was, whereas now, now there's, listen, we want you to go at three and your role at three is just to keep the scoreboard ticking, go hard, you know? So that's where I think that's come from. And I think that's partly to do him and Wanindo have been the same LPL team two years in a row. So I think when he's gone, I know what this guy can do and I want him to play the same role for me here. It's interesting with Kamindu, right? Because he came, like, when he was kind of coming through, there was much fanfare about his being ambidextrous. But actually, yeah. that's a total MacGuffin, right? Because <laughs> the umpire has to always tell the the batter which, which hand yeah. the ball is coming from. I remember thinking yeah. about like trying to do a little on like social media campaign for the poor fella and be like, come on, come on, MCC and ICC, change the rules because like this guy's natural advantage, you're, you're absolutely destroyed. But clearly, like that in itself was a MacGuffin because he was always a batter. He was never really meant to be a bowling all rounder, was he? Right, it's it's like I think his bowl is quite pedestrian. The last thing I've seen, hopefully, it proves me wrong one day and gets like five wickets against Pakistan <laughs> or something. Um, yeah. Can you tell us about Charith as well? What do you think Charith's ceiling is? Like, how good can oh, he? Oh, look, Char Charith's. Uh, um, what's the best word? He's he, he's he's just an incredibly hardworking cricketer. He has one of the best work ethics you're gonna find in the in the Sri Lankan cricket team. You know, whether it's fitness, whether it's batting, whether it's fielding, he's just got that never give up attitude. And that's where you, you mentioned it before. You said he's got this laser focus, like Chandler Paltis. That's where it comes from. It's his work ethic. He's just got this focus that I I, I want to deliver for my team. You know, and it's it, it's 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 it, to me it reminds me a lot of. Sangakara, and we hear, I mean, I've never worked with Sangha, I think I've just read the stories and same as you guys, where we hear so much that Sangha was, out of Sangha and Mahala, Sangha was the hard worker, Mahala was the talented one. And I think the same thing here, where Charit is also that hard worker, you know? Um, the, the the difference between between really uh, Sangha and Charit, I feel, is that Charit has got a little bit more power um, than Sangha, so he can actually get going. And we saw that in yesterday's game. Um, and, you know, if I was, to put it really, I'd say he's got Sangha's head and and, and Sanat's forearms. If you had to structure a player, you know what I mean. Uh, that that's <laughs> the, that's what Charith has. He, he's got and actually, you know what? He's got the heart of. I would say to add to that, I'd say he's got the heart of um, uh, of a Doni or a Arjun Rantunga. That the cap cool cap. We saw it. We saw, saw it yesterday, and we saw it in previous games. Even though he's captaining, he's still smiling. He's laughing. He's hugging these guys like it's not. Sure. You, you couldn't tell he was the captain, you know. Uh, so that that's great to see as well. Um, can you see why if, you, if you're watching on YouTube or listening at home can you see why we all get rizzed up before 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 we come <laughs> on air because Prad just goes yeah this and this you you won't even believe what he told us about Hasarag we're going to save that for another episode 
we're not, we're not going to uh, ask about that. Brad, I do have one question about the Asia Cup or about that period when, when you were with the side. Um, at the time, Asher Bandera was used a lot, deployed a lot in the field. And yep. I, th I, th I think it was quite clear to anyone who watched Sri Lanka play any of their games and that he was clearly our best fielder. Was that in itself yeah. a tactic to put our one of our best fielders into the into the squad and have him as the twelfth man so he can come on and and field or, or you know uh, how, how, how was that situation ever engineered? Because I don't I, I, I he's barely ever batted for for SL right. If he has done it, it's always been yeah. in the sort of injury crisis strewn series. <laughs> yeah, no, yes, he has. So I mean. Look, I don't know if the ACC can take the Asia Cup off us now, but yes, that was a tactic um, <laughs> to, 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 <laughs> to, to save us. He was saving runs, at least 10, 12 runs. We were trying to measure it. It's really difficult, but you try and measure as much as you can. And at minimum, you, you get saving 10 runs off him, right? So suddenly a 170 score became 180, you know, with him on the field. Um, and and you don't notice in the final of the Asia Cup, he was on the field the whole whole game i mean mind you barnaker did have a little bit of a i think a back issue as well i um, can't believe but... barnaker had an injury when he was fielding i can't <laughs> believe that <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah so he did and i think in that game uh, ashen mandara got the best fielder of the game <laughs> he wasn't even in the 11 right so uh, so it was look it was a tactic we used he he was i think with the where, where the issue was was um his his game his batting game um, is he doesn't have the power game, and you know he's a, he's a really one of the quickest in the Sri Lanka team, I'd say, on a short sprint. Bandar is probably one of the quickest, um, so he can run with the wickets really quick and get you the runs there. But the role he would fill is mainly bad at your five, six, seven, and you can't do that. You need the power game, so that let him down a little bit. Um, then while he was with us, even at the World Cup and stuff, we'd get him to balls because he can ball leg spin. So we'd say, okay, let's see how your leg spin is. And try and find that role for him because you know you're getting ten runs on the field from him. If you can get a quick 530 of 20 off him on the bat as well, suddenly he turns into a 40 run player and you you know you're you're winning. So but we, we just couldn't get that. So but we carried him as a fielder and to use him as a backup batter. Um but I think that so he, he needs to develop his 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 I think his uh, power game. If I was him and or if I was working with him, that's what I'd, I'd just keep throwing him balls and say, just keep trying to clear the ropes. Incredible. Nick, there's a bit of a history of using uh, professional fielders in, in Sri Lankan cricket, right? Yeah, well, I think Upul, um, Upul Chandana did it a lot during 96 World Cup and in the years after. And, um, well, I think Hamantha was doing it a little bit at the World Cup, wasn't he? Um, but, I mean, in general, yeah. to me, it looks like since Chandana came into the setup and, uh, well, just generally over the last, since the last ODI World Cup, that the fielding's taken a little boost. And, um, Seems like a lot less catches going down. Is that fair? Do you yeah. guys agree with that? I agree. I agree. I've seen an uptick definitely since Chandan has come in. Yeah, I I also think they just look a bit fitter. I don't know. Mm. I, I I don't know if it's I don't know what the most like whether there's been a drive from SLC or the players themselves have just gone got around and said we need to be fitter when we're not achieving what we think we should be achieving. I also think the fact that there's more franchise contracts available. Um, kind of, you know, drives players to to be a bit more focused on getting them. I mean, I I don't know if that's true. I don't know, Prad, if you can, you know, if you know if, if that's something that players talk about getting a franchise contract because, um, not not when it comes to the fitness. I mean, personally themselves, that um, it might be a motivator for them individually, but. Um, I think the new fitness regime came about with the whole change, you know, within SLC. They said, okay, look, we need to commit a little bit more to fitness. And and, and I know one Indu put a big focus on that as captain for the T20 side. So I think he kind of told the players, listen, if you want to play in my team, you need to be fit. Simple. Um, you're either fit or you're not. Um, and I think that came, and I'm sure probably um, Kusal probably bought into the same thing and with the one days and all that. So it, it might be both SLC and player driven as well. It's an exciting time for Shrugan Cricket. Um, when Indu's been, what, captain for six games, six T20 games, is it? Was it? Yeah. And yeah. There, there, there really seems to be quite a big difference. It's not just about scraping the score together. It's let, let's, you know, and obviously the, lot, the second T20, they didn't quite do it. But I still think there was, you know, they, they didn't shy away from that intent 
it just didn't work out. And I think the 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 thing is for us as fans is that we've got to remember that if they're going to play with that intent, some days it's just not going to work out, right? Um, and and I think there might be a little bit of kind of a give and take slightly where we've got to not throw the the baby out with the bathwater when they get bowled out for for eighty eight. You know, when when they go when they're away from home, and we're just gonna you know accept that that's gonna happen. And every you know for every eighty eight, there'll be a two eighty, or maybe not a two eighty. That that's quite high in T twenty cricket. Um, you know, there'll be a two thirty or two forty maybe, and kind of it feels like you know Sri Lanka, the cricket team really went off the tracks in the World Cup, but it feels like we're, we're kind of back on it. I don't know if you two both agree. Yeah, I was really pleased to see them backing Pateron after he had a bit of a stinker on Monday. Um, and he bowled really well today. And it's like that, um, you know, in the past, I think they would have been quite quick to pull someone like that out of the firing line and say, take a spell on the sidelines. And so to see that, you know, because he's such a special talent, see someone like that being encouraged, it's really um, promising. I definitely think the T20 side's in a better place than I thought it would be at this stage going into the World Cup. And I think it's a really exciting IPL from a Sri Lankan perspective. Like, um, really excited to see what kind of role Hasaranga has at Sunrisers. I hope he's batting in the top six or at least top seven for them. Um, Patirana and Theeks at CSK, Dilshan and Tashara at Mumbai. I mean, there's a lot of intrigue there. And I think we could potentially have a situation where, what, in three months' time, when we're at the World Cup, some of these players have, um, well, slightly more of a reputation behind them than they do at the moment internationally. Um, you know, in every kind of, you know, those those 80s kind of, what I'm going to refer to as like combat slash action movies, like Karate <laughs> Kid or Kickboxer or like even even Rambo. Oh, it's not Rambo, uh, Rocky. There's always in, there's always a sequel or even a third film where they get sent off somewhere kind of foreign to where they're from and they have to go work with some some uh, a different kind of kung fu master who's a, who actually trained their their original master and i kind of feel that's what uh one he going to uh sunrises is all about he's got to go and <laughs> go and sit in a cave and meditate with, with murley over the art of international <laughs> cricket and the art of, of, of spinning and he's going to come back uh ready for this world cup looking like an absolute monster and ready to uh to take down all in front of him Brad, i'm right of course right that's exactly what's going to happen isn't it <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I've never worked in the IPL. I'd love to, but I've never worked in the IPL, so I wouldn't know. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping it does happen. Uh, uh, in, in saying that, I think uh, one he's got a new uh, lease of life, at least life at the moment, in the sense that where he, with the captain, I think he he's he realizes what's on his shoulders. Um, so I think he'll make the most of that IPL. So whether that's Murley, whether that's you know whoever else it is, um, he's I think he's going to be soaking it all in. Uh, and he's, guys, he's, he's actually he's working with one of the greatest captains as well, with Pat Cummins being named captain as well. So you can learn a few tricks there. Yeah, yeah and have they just got Dan Vittori as their new head coach? He looks like he might be a man oh, yeah. who enjoys and meditate. Yeah. <laughs> I can see Cummins, Vittori, Murali, Hasaranga all kind of sat around in a circle with like incense and candles, really um channeling it's, it's, something. It's, it's, Nick, it's Hyderabad. It's because it's be plates and plates and plates of biryani. Yeah, just, <laughs> the biryani just keeps on coming. It keeps on coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a wonderful um, image. Uh, guys, should we leave it there with that image of um, uh, Hasaranga and Murali in plates of biryani in Hyderabad? Um, and if you've made it all this far, please do subscribe to our newsletter. Um, it comes out roughly about once a week at some point, and we write about Sri Lankan cricket. Hopefully, I'm trying to get Prad to write us a piece. I don't know what he's going to write about. Uh, maybe about his experience of working with the LPL. Maybe about working with the team. Maybe we'll just write about his favourite Sri Lankan player or, the, or or his favourite Sri Lankan player when he was a kid, or or I don't know. Um, but Nick's written a piece. I, I occasionally write. I'm pretty much the worst writer involved in it. Um, and uh, yeah, so please do sign up for it and um, hit the follow, the subscribe, whatever you're listening or watching this podcast. We'll be back next week. Thanks, thanks for joining us. Bye.